So what we're looking at here is Haitian Power Plant. And Haitian Power Plant is situated right next to Morecambe Bay. Now, some time ago, last year, I was filming close to this location and uh, we saw the water obstruct the buildings of Barrow. It was undeniable, it happened. It's what I saw, it's what the camera saw. And I released the video. Because unlike the Globers, I'm here for the science. I'm here for actual science. Evaluating things, understanding the environment, understanding where we live. And part of that process is showing the good, the bad and the ugly. But also a part of that is to try and understand what was going on in this location at that time for me to see this apparent curvature. Well after some digging around it was quite easy to find the solution actually. Something that the Globers won't do. You see, parrots such as conspiracy cats will show the video and say that this is proof of curvature when I've already explained to them what was going on at this time and they ignore it. Now a real scientist, somebody that takes science seriously doesn't just profess to be a science teacher but actually does science takes the good, the bad and the ugly weighs it up with all the variables takes all the data and formulates a conclusion and that's what I've done and in this case this is quite a special location because this is actually called Morecambe Bay and it's one of the few places in the world where we have the right topography of the land underneath the high tides um, and this bay area to uh, produce something called a tidal bore and as I say this is just one of the few lo locations in the world where this actually happens it's quite a spectacular thing actually what you're looking at here is obviously the the sand oh, one second you actually are seeing the sand in front of the building over there and in less than an hour all this area will be filled with water even where I'm stood right now will be filled with water and let me just pan to the left and show you something here we have the Irish Sea and this is right at the mouth right here is right at the mouth of the estuary and what you're seeing is the Irish Sea pouring in thousands and thousands of tons of water pushing in every minute up the estuary and what happens is this surge of water just keeps pouring in and pouring in and pouring in and it artificially raises the height of the tide in this location so you see, when I'm trying to film the buildings of Barrow, which are essentially in this direction right now, although you can't see them because they're hidden behind a uh, cloud, but right where you're looking now is where this tidal bore happens. If you notice the waves are all going in one direction, you don't see the waves going from right to left. There's no forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards that you would normally expect to see when you're at the seaside. This is just a constant pouring of water in from the Irish Sea up this estuary and it is causing a tidal bore. Now in this location it's known that these tidal bores can reach two meters. In other words the height of the tide is artificially risen by two meters. That creates an artificial hump, so to speak, 
two meters in height above what you would normally expect to see. So, if I was holding the camera at four meters, then I should be able to clear the two meter swell and see the buildings of Barrow, providing it's a good day. And on the day in question when I was down filming, I noted my height above actual sea level. You see, I walked down to where the water was lapping my feet, showed you on camera, showed you where I was filming from, and you could quite easily see that I was four feet above sea level. And yet, Conspiracy Cats, who, again, like I say, professes to be a science teacher, professes to be in this for the science, on a recent debate with a pretend flat earther called KRO, deliberately misrepresented my height above sea level and gave me an arbitrary height of between three and four meters above actual sea level. So on the 31st of July, this is where I took the original footage. Uh, the video is called A New Location Where I Can Really Smash the Globe. Um, this is where I parked my car, which was down here. I walked up this path, up to the top here, down onto the first uh, ledge, and there's a little ledge that just goes across here, and that's where I was doing my filming from. Um, the tidal bore footage that you're watching right now was filmed from this location right here. And if we have a look for some landmarks, we have, obviously this is Morecambe Bay. Here we have the power plant over at Haitian, which is just here. So if I was to draw a direct line of sight to that, it would be across here like so. And if we are going to look at um, Barrow and Furnace, this is the buildings of Barrow over here. Um, there's the buildings that we would have um, been filming. I'll just put a, a save on there for that one. And as you can see, it is across this mouth of the Morecambe Bay. So here we have the Irish Sea and here we have Morecambe Bay. And obviously you're watching the tide push in from left to right. Uh, so conversely, this was the same um, direction looking over from the 31st of July, looking over at the buildings of Barrow, which are here. I'll put a save on there as well. And as you can see, we are looking across the same stretch of water, the same uh, mouth or entranceway bottleneck, whichever way you choose to call it, um, leading into Morecambe Bay. So here's a bit of the video in question. As you can see, we're looking across at Barrow in Furnace. So this is from the observation that's slightly further away, but across the same um, mouth of the of the estuary. As you can see, the bottom of these buildings, including the lighthouse itself, is actually obscured by the incoming tide. What you're actually looking at here is the same effect as being evidenced in the video that I'm um, playing right now, sorry, the, the one that I filmed more recently. Uh, that you'll be seeing in a minute. And um, and yeah, I mean, what we're looking at here is an artificial height of the water. As the water is being pushed in, it's just going in one direction, it's being pushed in into the bottleneck and it is bottlenecking right in front of me. And at the time I didn't realize that that was what was happening. So as you can see, uh, this artificial um, height that's being created by this tidal bore is causing um, the bottom of the buildings to be obscured by the water. I walk off the ledge, I step down to where the water is incoming, I stand right next to the incoming water and then I'm holding the camera at chest height and then I lower myself just to get it level with that ledge. So when I'm level with the ledge I know that that's the height above sea level and, you know, I'm pretty good at guessing these kind of things. I'm only five foot seven. So if it's at um, nipple height, I am pretty sure that the um, 
the height above actual sea level is around about four feet. But in this video, uh, he zooms out and he shows himself, I reckon, to be about three or four metres off the ground. So here we have the Morecambe Bay Tidal Bore. Information can be found at holidaycottagescumbria.com. Uh, what we have is a document here that states that the, the bore itself isn't quite high enough to surf, but record, bore, record bores of over two metres have been recorded in adverse conditions, so over two metres. So we're looking at at least seven, meter, seven feet, um, maybe even as much as eight feet, if you were to say the average is five feet, six feet, seven feet, it doesn't really matter. We have this tidal bay happening in this location. Here we have in the guardian.com, we have another uh, article about Morecambe Bay. It says Morecambe Bay is a treacherous place. The combination of fast tides, quick sands, draining rivers, shifting channels, and sheer unpredictability has trapped the unwary for centuries. The bay is now broad and shallow with a tidal range of up to 10.5 metres at spring tides and an ebbing tide that can retreat as far as 12 kilometres. The booklet published by Morecambe Bay Partnership explains that the bay is dangerous because it is dynamic, ever-changing, and sands shift and channels swerve. The bay's broad funnel-like shape and shallow depth affects the tidal ebb and flow, creating strong currents. Tidal bores can roar over the sands at speeds of nine knots. These powerful tidal currents mould the soft sediment, piling them into sandbacks, gouging out deep muddy channels and scooping out deep, dangerous holes that will fill with quicksand whose position can change daily. And when you look at the uh, topography of the land, you can now see that when the tide pushes in from this direction here and is coming across here, so effectively the tides are moving from left to right, what you're actually getting is the entire Irish Sea pushing into this bottleneck right here along this line. Coincidentally, the line that I was filming across. Um, and right at this point where this bottleneck is, where I'm moving this line here, right here is where all the water is being pushed up and the height is artificially being raised in this location. So if you imagine we're looking at this in a perspective view, what this will effectively do is artificially raise the water in this, in this location right in front of where I am. So on the left hand side, we have the, the Irish Sea. So the Irish Sea is pushing in from the left across, coming in like so, hitting this bottleneck. This is where this bottleneck is right here. And it will be artificially raising the water at the bottleneck right here as the slower frontal edge of the tide as it's pushing in the tidal bore this slow as it slows down as it's moving up the estuary it causes this back up and this back up as the tide's pushing in will artificially raise the the height of the the water across where i'm trying to film from so to look at it another way um when you saw that i was filming from the ledge and the height above actual sea level was just four feet um if i was filming across looking at the buildings of barrow in the distance and we had this tidal bore right in my direct line of sight at a height of two meters what this would effectively mean is that my line of sight level line of sight would be approximately three feet below the height of the artificial um, tidal bore wave that's right in front of me. So that would be a um, the bottom line here, this blue part here would be level, water level. Here we would have the artificially raised height in my direct line of sight at the bottleneck. And this would be my direct line of sight four feet trying to visit uh, to view the buildings of Barrow in the distance so let me put the buildings of Barrow in the distance let me put the lighthouse in so here we have the lighthouse like so and as you can see the tidal bore is actually intersecting my line of sight and cutting off the bottom of the uh, the lighthouse 
and that can be seen in the video itself. I come back down to the video and I'll find you the lighthouse. So here we have the lighthouse. Here we have line of sight, level line of sight, right here where my cursor is. And then we have uh, more artificially raised um, tidal bore height, cutting off the bottom of the buildings of Barrow to the left and obviously Walney Lighthouse to the right. Even though on the video I quite clearly state and show my exact location proving that I was no more than four feet above sea level. You so, so you see well he then went on to say that the tide was at four feet and I was at three to four meters above sea level and the blockage was there and yada yada flapping his gums. So of course this is what you expect from people that aren't in it for the science. So people like conspiracy cats, like I say, who pretend to be science, that's what they're all about, science. And yet they will take this data and misrepresent it. They're lying to their audience. And you see, with this new information, now knowing that I was only four feet above actual sea level at the time when I filmed this apparent obstruction by the sea, and knowing that in this location, the exact area that I was filming across, which was the mouth where the Irish Sea meets the estuary, that exact location where all this turbulence takes place and this artificially raises the height of the, of the sea by as much as two meters. Well, there's your blockage. There's the reason. You see, this is what happens when you actually go out and you do some research. You do the legwork, you get down here, you do the filming, and you're seeing right now, you're actually watching the tide surging in, rushing in, filling up this bay. So this is the one... So this is one of the few locations in the world where you can actually witness this. And had it not been for conspiracy cats tugging at my strings, misrepresenting the work that I'm doing, I wouldn't be down here ramming it down his throat and saying, guess what, conspiracy cats, Mr. Science? This is science. Learning the topography of your environment. I now know that there is a swell right at the mouth here, and that any time I should come down to this exact spot, I should expect to see blockage, because the tidal bore will artificially increase the height of the water. Now this isn't me saying this, this is well documented. This location is known for it. Except I didn't know, I just had to research it. So there's a massive difference between flat earth and globe earth. You see, the only scientists, and I'll say it again, right now are the flat earthers. The globe earthers aren't interested in the truth. They're interested in a narrative. They are parrots, and that's all they will do is lie and obfuscate and make things up so that it fits their belief system, their religion. So this is the second time that Conspiracy Cats has misrepresented me. The first one was on the boat. So this is the second time that Conspiracy Cats has taken my work and misrepresented. You see, where I do the science, he does the misrepresentation. He will take an image of the boat sailing away with an inferior mirage underneath it and the bottom of the boat being hidden by the inferior mirage and he will claim that it's going over the curvature of the earth yet I have demonstrated numerous times that the inferior mirage isn't happening as a mirror image on the water it is a different 
kettle of fish. It happens above the water layer, in the atmosphere. The cause of that could be the Rayleigh Criterion. I believe Conspiracy Cats has a understanding that Flat Earthers don't understand the Rayleigh Criterion. Well, let me tell you something, Sunshine. It's you that doesn't understand it. So in my dealings with conspiracy cats to date, we've had misrepresentation of the artificially increased height of the sea. We've had misrepresentation of a boat disappearing, not over the curvature of the earth, but due to perspective and hidden by the inferior mirage. We have also had conspiracy cats lying to his Twitter followers. You see, I knew he would do this, and I made sure that I made everybody know of my position when he challenged me to a debate. And for the record, <laughs> I'll never be debating him. I don't need to debate him, his own team has already debunked him thoroughly enough anyway. It was quite funny watching him with that KRO. Not only did he destroy his argument for uh, the seism <laughs> for, for seismology, and being able to use that to determine the shape of the earth but he also got it absolutely spot on when the gentleman said you don't know the topography of the land in this location uh, now i've got a video accompanying this how high off sea level do you think he is taking this photograph from from because he's zoomed in there with his his p1000 he, he's um, he's got a cracking camera how high off sea level do you think he is when he's taken that it's it's very difficult to tell. It's impossible to tell. Yeah, uh, I mean, it might be, it might be on the surface. It might be a few meters up. It might be. I don't know. To be honest, yeah, I can I can I, I only see waves and I only see that that uh, uh, lighthouse that yeah. shows and the horizon and I see where you're going because I see you're showing that uh, it's I can only see the top of the lighthouse and. Uh, Again, uh, yeah, um, you you might say that is proof of a of a ground Earth, but to be honest, I mean, I I don't I don't see I don't see how to be honest because the 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 the, the sea moves, the waves move, and uh, the, there there is a huge distance probably between the observer and that lighthouse, so doesn't 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 tell me that the earth is round and again even if there was some uh, local uh, apparent curvature that could be generated by whatever uh, uh, topology feature of the of the, um, of the ground or or, or even a, an optical effect but in this video uh, he zooms out and he shows himself i reckon to be about three or four meters off the ground well, you see, he actually did, because I told him this a couple of months ago. He just chose to ignore it. There's, Haim there's Haitian power plant again. And as you can see, see all the water rushing in, filling in this estuary, pushing in. And right at the mouth, right here, This is where we're getting the tidal bore. You 
So you don't see any water going in from right to left here? No, 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 no. It's a one-way push right now. This is where all the mixing happens. Can you see the height of the water right here? And can you see the relative calmness over here? Notice how the tides are washing up against the, the sands and then falling back into this oncoming tide and it's just being picked up again and pushed further in, further up the estuary. The water isn't allowed to rest in this location, it's turbulent, it's aggressive. That's why so many cockle pickers have died in this location the tide comes in so fast, it drowned them. just one way traffic for this water it's not going in any other direction but in and this is where the bottleneck is conspiracy cats this is where it bottlenecks you know what happens when you get a bottleneck don't you Can you see where the white waves are? That's where all the turbulence is. When we go further in, not so much. When we go further out, not so much. But where the bottleneck is, which is right here, look at the swell right there. And guess what? That's where I was filming across. Oh yes. Let's just have a look out to see again. relatively calm come to the bottleneck and woohoo Right at the bottleneck again. 
Look at how high these waves are in comparison to the others. Look how much churning there is. Funny, it looks exactly like the waves I was filming. Anyone would think I was filming the same phenomena 